Hello and welcome to Love and Lordship Live. I'm Greg Williams. You can hear more from our book and ministry, uh, The Authority of Love. Uh, now, the ministry on Christian radio is The Authority of Love. The book is the second edition. So if you're looking for that, uh, make sure you spell out second, S-E-C-O-N-D. Otherwise, you'll be on a goose chase, okay? Um, you can find that on Amazon. You can listen to us uh, on daily, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. on 99.1 FM, WJMM, Central Kentucky Christian Radio. Or you can go to their website, WJMM.com, uh, and check out the podcast tab, upper right corner, and look at the Love and Lordship links, and you'll find the day's current message and the previous two days. You can find all the podcasts at uh, loveandlordship.podbean.com. That's loveandlordship, spell it all out, .podbean.com, or all the videos at vimeo.com forward slash loveandlordship. Now, with that introduction and where else you can find us, this week we're going to continue diving deeper into God's kind of love according to his truth in Christ, and we're going to continue with the identity in Christ, our identity. Remember, we spent a long time with the names of God, uh, with the prayer that we would each know and love God more, fulfilling the first and greatest command, right? Well, the second command says, love your neighbor as you love yourself strongly indicating that if we don't know and love who we are in Christ, we will not lay our lives down to love others. That's what his love did. And so we're, we're on a series now called Our Identity in Christ, Knowing and Loving Who You Are in Christ, because obviously we're going to soon get to loving others. Uh, and that's true discipleship in line with his covenant order and the priority of his commands as Christ gave them to us. This week, we talk a little bit more about who we are in the body of Christ. And so our first scripture text, remember, you can find all of these at loveandlordship.com, loveandlordship, spell it all out, dot com. And you will find all the articles, videos, and podcasts there of this Love and Lordship Live and some others. And I have all of the scripture text linked in each of the articles if you read them. So our first scripture this week in our identity in Christ is 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. You see, in Christ, you have both an individual identity and an incredible identity of belonging to his family, the church. So may we love one another in such a way to make every member confident of who they are in Christ. Folks, that can only be done if we are in Christ. In last week's post, we looked at our identity as being united with Christ in spirit as individuals, and we alluded to the unity of the body of Christ. This unity is essential to who we are in Christ because we are literally members of his body. Again, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Paul describes our identity and unity in specific analogous terms of our own bodies and reminds us that every part is important and plays its role only as we accept our identity and humbly and diligently do our part. As a former athlete and coach, one of the greatest things I learned and taught applies here in our identity. When we try to do things that we were not given, skilled, or prepared to do, we end up much less effective and often on the bench, <laughs> right? However, when we recognize our calling, our abilities, our gifting, our preparation and roles, i.e. our identity, we find that in humility we are much more effective in abiding in Christ and accomplishing the purpose, or better yet, allowing him to accomplish through us the purpose that we were called and created for, both personally and collectively in his body. If you are a believer in Christ, he lovingly and boldly calls you to walk in that identity and be confident, content, and fulfill true humility, shalom, wholeness in his purpose in and through you to love others. The thing that most often, most often gets in the way of us sharing, serving, and loving others is our discontent with who we are in Christ, questioning what he's called and equipped us to do because we allow the world and others, even within the churches, to define us. Christ is the only one 
who can truly let you know who you are. After all, he's the creator. Colossians says not only is the creator, but he holds all things together, including you and me. And what he has, he, he has a purpose in what he has created you for. Look to and be fulfilled in him and who you are in him. Paul tells us in Romans that we've all sinned and are all sinners. In our proud flesh, that's a hard pill to swallow because each of us thinks we're pretty good folk, right? But sin is our default, and it separates us from God. What comes naturally is rooted in our flesh and sin unless we bring that under the discipline of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and His Word. We are going to choose that sinful walk, but we've been given a new person, a new identity in Christ. That's the identity that Satan wants to steal from you. He would rather that you carry this sin nature. It's natural, so why not? With you, carry that with you to the end so that his work of killing, stealing, and destroying are complete. John 10, 10a says the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Are you giving him way, thinking that it's okay because you're acting in the natural, the flesh? He's winning. You have a new nature in Christ with the Holy Spirit. That's why discipleship is so important. None of us wants that identity, but we're stuck with it. That is, until the one who came to bring us life, and not just life, but abundant life, John 10, 10, B, the second part of that text, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. He gave his life to change it all. That's the identity that we all truly desire because we were created for. Go look at Ecclesiastes 3.11. God has placed eternity in our hearts, and the only way we can know that and be fulfilled in it is in Christ. We were made for and to desire eternity, but we blew it. Christ came to restore our real identity so that we could be assured of eternity. However, without Him forgiving us and our acceptance of that, I surrender to you. I submit to you. I need a Savior and I can't do it, so I'm giving myself to you. And His making us holy and whole, we have no chance of entering into that eternity with Him. That's why understanding and walking in our identity in Him is so powerful. Each of us as sinners in our natural flesh, as I've been talking about, once we, by grace through faith, believe in Christ, are made saints that live forever with God. Everyone who has received Christ and is faithful in Christ is addressed as saint. 1 Corinthians 1-2. Remember the links in these articles at loveandlordship.com. Now let me ask you this. How's that for an identity? You can live assuredly that you're saved and God sees you as a saint. The sin is washed away, even when you stumble. As long as you remain in Christ, confess those sins, and know that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from that unrighteousness because he has already made you so. Now, are you still living in a sinner identity with all the destructive repercussions of that life? You will reap what you sow. God cannot be mocked. Go look at Galatians 6, 7 and 8. Or are you living as the saint that Christ died to make you and sowing in the Spirit? We're talking about love and identity in Christ. My hope and prayer is that you understand what that means. And by knowing Christ, you truly know and love who you are in Him. Don't let the world change that in any way, shape, or form. Stay focused on Him. Now, another part of identity in Christ is found in one of the most beautiful revelations about who we are not only in Christ but with Him. John 15, 13 through 15 plainly tells us in the context of being branches in the vine, Christ Himself, and walking in His love that He's called us friends. Again, not only individually but as the body. I, you, every believer together, I, you, we are a friend of God of Christ as we walk and remain in Him as Savior and Lord. Do you realize that as a believer in Christ, you are in, in an intimate fellowship with Him? Are you living and growing in that friendship with Him? What does it look like to be in and build a friendship with anyone, including God Himself? I pray you do know Him and are walking as His friend because that is what He has called you to be. Are you spending? Here's how you do it. 
Answer these questions and you'll know whether you are or not. Are you spending time with him in his word, in prayer, and in listening to him? That's how you grow any friendship, and this one is no different. I pray that just as Christ has made the Father known to you, that you will make him known to others. That's true friendship. And we've been focusing on our identity as being accepted of God as his children, friends, redeemed, saints, a part of his body, the church, forgiven and whole in Christ. Let me close today's post with the reality, don't miss this word in all of these things, the reality that we've been discovering or rediscovering that we are in him, that we are secure in him in all the ways that we are. Because of God's great love given to me, to you, and to all believers in Christ, I, you, and we are now reborn of God. And because of his love and grace, the evil one can't touch me or you. The only way he can is if we submit to him. I may choose to step out of that and enter into sin, which invites the enemy and sin back into my life. And in so doing, then I have to deal with those consequences. However, I can be forgiven as I recognize, confess, and repent of those sins. I quoted it earlier, but 1 John 1, 7 through 9. But as long as I choose by grace through faith, his strength and grace in me to remain in all that he has given me in Christ, then I belong to him. I'm reborn in Christ, secure in him, protected from the enemy. That's my identity. Let me close with this food for thought and some action items as always. As a believer in Christ as Savior and Lord, you have the security and assurance of being born of God in Christ, newborn, protected from all the enemy brings against you as you remain in him. You also have the assurance that you are an integral and much needed part of his body. Man, how valuable is that? The church. Are you allowing him to define you? And do you know who you are in him? Three quick action items. The first two are the same because I think they're needed every day. Read the scriptures in this article and others and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Secondly, journal what you've learned about your identity in Christ individually now and collectively as part of his body, the church. What we talked about in this post in these scriptures. Then take it a step further and journal how God has recreated you in Christ, gifted you for his purposes and how you are or can be used of him for his glory. If you got questions or need help, Love and Lordship is a safe place. Contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com, loveandlordship at gmail.com, or you can text or call 859-229-6504 or message me right here on Facebook. We'd love to connect with you and engage with you, and if we can help, or if your group or, or, or church or organization would like to partner with us in any way, contact me, please. Got several that are doing that now. We're so excited and looking forward to the opportunity to share and connect and grow together in the Lord. Please continue to pray for us as we very much need the prayers. And if the Lord leads you to see this as a kingdom ministry of his glorifying him and you to be a part of it financially, will you follow through with that? If not, keep praying until he shows you where to follow through. He wants you to give of yourself in that way. If you can, and I pray that you set apart some for him always, first and foremost, and watch him bless, wherever that might be, whether here or wherever, and especially as a part of the local church. Make sure you're doing that. Our vision is every life and relationship built on the love and lordship of Jesus Christ. Our mission is making disciples who make disciples in the love and lordship of Jesus Christ in every home, church, and beyond for his kingdom and glory. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ.